So a friend called me out to help her with her Wi-Fi because it was slow and laggy. But what I discovered was far worse than just a little lag on Fortnite and buffering Netflix. Yep, it turned out somebody actually hacked her Wi-Fi and was remotely enabling her camera on her computer. That's pretty scary stuff. So if you're worried about your Wi-Fi and somebody spying on you, don't worry, I got you. Today I'm going to show you the couple of steps that you need to do to protect your Wi-Fi. Let's do it. Break it down now, phone. And welcome to another episode of Talking Tech with the Techie Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadget, apps, tips and tricks and how to, hit that subscribe button and let's get on to today's show. The whole thing was actually pretty scary. She basically didn't follow a couple of the basic steps, which is how the person got in. And I want to make sure that you're not making the same mistakes. So let's start with the firmware. Now, firmware is essentially the software that runs the router. Now, typically these are produced in mass quantities and at that time, certain version of that software is released. But since then, these things have been sitting in warehouses and container ships around the world. What you need to do is make sure that you have the latest software update, the latest firmware, because this is when they've done the improvements and they've closed up any security vulnerabilities that have been reported. Some routers are pretty easy. You simply log in, find the firmware, click on the update and it will check if there's another version. Other routers, you've got to go to the manufacturer's website, see what the latest version is, and simply follow the prompts to install it on your router. Sounds complicated, but it's just a matter of downloading a file, pointing the location to it, and then hitting the update button. Go and do that, it's very important. Don't use the default Wi-Fi name that comes with your router. Now, typically when you install a router out of the box, it will have the router manufacturer, like Linksys and a model number perhaps, or Netgear and a model number, and that is the way you connect to it in order to set up the equipment. OK, so I get it that that's how it comes out of the box. But a lot of people simply leave that default name for the SSID or your network name. Go and change it. You're giving away the information about what the equipment is and what the version number of the software is as well. So the admin username and password. Now, this is a biggie. Now, most manufacturers have got really good about forcing you to change the default password to something else. And that's great because a simple Google search will simply reveal what is the default username and password. Ideally, if you can go into your settings and change the username as well, get rid of admin, make it something unique to you with a unique password. Now, of course, when you add a password to this, make sure it's a nice, strong, complicated password that isn't available in a dictionary. Always, always, always use WPA2 as your encryption. When you set up your Wi-Fi, the 2.4 gigahertz or the 5 gigahertz, it's going to ask you what kind of security or encryption do you want to have on that. And it gives you choices like WEP, WPA, WPA2. Choose WPA2 always. Most devices that have been manufactured after 2016 are WPA2 AES compliant. So you should be absolutely perfectly fine. And be on the lookout for WPA3 that's supposed to be come out. And I'm assuming that's going to be a simple firmware update to get that as well. Who is connected to your Wi-Fi? Most routers, again, will have a facility that allow you to see which devices are currently connected to the Wi-Fi. Go into that list. Go make sure that you can identify each and every device that's connected. Now, you're going to see your laptop. You're going to see your tablet. You're going to see your phones. So you will see other devices connected to your network, which you don't recognize. But don't panic. This could be your smart TV. It could be your security cameras. It could be your smart plugs, your home assistant, any of those that make a Wi-Fi connection. If you cannot pinpoint what those are, what you need to do is switch off Wi-Fi, switch off each one of those devices, and then switch on your Wi-Fi, and then slowly switch on your smart TV. Make sure that connects, rename that as smart TV, and so on and so on and so on. A bit of a pain to do it, but you're going to do it once. And the reason you're doing it is that from that point on, you know exactly that all the devices connected to your Wi-Fi are legitimate devices. In fact, you can go into your router settings and block any additional connections being made to your Wi-Fi and only limit it to the devices that you recognize. But now you're going to say to me, what happens when friends and family come over? Yes, well, what I never understand is why people don't enable the guest Wi-Fi on the routers. 
that's exactly what it's meant for. Simply enable the guest network that separates the guests from your real Wi-Fi, still gives them that internet access, and then your Wi-Fi is nice and protected. Go and enable the guest network, making sure that you've got a strong password and use WPA2 as a security, obviously. These will not only secure your Wi-Fi, but also enhance your bandwidth connectivity. Check out some more videos over here about faster Wi-Fi and faster bandwidth. Check them out right here. If it's your first time here, welcome. Hit the head below to subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. And let me see you in these videos. Let's go.